Vince Russo. Yeah, Vince Russo. Oh, Vince Russo. That's who it was. Yeah. Oh, I can't stand him. Uh, I remember Bret Hart was looking like this at me. I looked around like this. I said, are you out of your fucking mind? Do you think I'm going to go out there and waller around in the mud? I said, who are you? Fuck you. Fuck you, Vince Russo. Fuck you to you now. You ruined everything for everybody in WCW. You ruined everything. Your stinking cartoons. Everything. You ruined it for everybody. Everybody wanted to get into it. Any kind of... Any any talent that wanted to try to get into it. You just ruined it for everybody. I can't stand you, you stinking son of a bitch. How do you really feel? <laughs> That's how I feel. I remember Mula. I was on the outside and she wouldn't tag me. And boy, did I get so hot. I got so hot because she wouldn't tag me. And I, and I know now, but then I didn't know. I just knew that we had to get out there and fight each other and pretend. But uh, I wasn't smart to what was going on still. They kept it very quiet. And Mula wouldn't tag me. And I raised all kinds of hell. I tried to tag her. I went back to the dressing room the first time I ever said anything bad to her. I told her, don't you ever do that to me again. Paid a fine, and they let me go. I don't know how that happened. I heard no more about it. I was so afraid they were going to tell Mula. All I said to him all the way back to the arena, I said, please don't tell Mula. Please don't tell Mula. I don't care what else you do. I don't care if you charge me $1,000. Just please don't tell Mula. Eddie Graham was a very serious person. I, I liked Eddie Graham. He is one of the best promoters. I liked um, Roy Shires and him and Vern Gagne. Um, so Andre stood up and he grabbed him by the shirt. He picked him up and said, Boy, you don't never, ever touch a woman I'm with. These are my women. And he just dropped him. So Andy Gibbons started like getting a little teary-eyed because he really was into Andre. And he got his hands and he's begging, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And then Andre said, Get away from me. Get away from me. Andre was a really good person. He had his little circle of friends, and if you weren't in that circle, stay away from him. Andre was always in a lot of pain. He would tell me he's in a lot of pain. Super Survivor Series, he was in a lot of pain. I come there with him. I rode with him uh, to Super Survivor Series 1, and he was in an awful lot of pain. He was sometimes teary-eyed and couldn't stand it. His pants were ripped up. I tried to fix his pants for him. Well, Velvet McIntyre did, but he just told me before he went out to the ring, and he said, I'm just so much pain. He was always talking about being in pain. And I guess I was just easy for him to talk to. I had to be serious when Vince Jr. was around. He wasn't a very joking in person. Pat Patterson stories? Um, no. I, he was very business. Right. He was a very business person. I traveled with him some. Um... We'd, we'd talk about men. <laughs> we'd talk about men. I remember that. <laughs> he he would, he had a lot of ideas. He would talk to talk to us about different ideas of of if we were going to do a match. What Bruno? Um, I saw Bruno a lot. Bruno didn't like women's wrestling. He said, "You know, you don't belong in the business." Um, but you have good matches. I could take my hat off for that, but you don't belong in the, in the ring. And when I went to Japan, I, I thought to myself, I, I'm going to get out of this misery of being working with her and just try to go back to Japan as much as I can, learn as much as I wanted to and could. She didn't get along very good with Sherry Martell. Sherry seemed to be in trouble all the time in her eyes, and Sherry really did nothing to her. Sherry didn't stay really very long. I took a trip with Sherry to uh, Tennessee, her first trip. Her first uh, trip with me was in Tennessee. We went to Memphis, and uh, Sherry had a lot of friends there. We ha she had her first match, and she was good friends with Jerry Lee Lewis, and his manager came to the building and invited us to Jerry Lee Lewis's birthday party. I remember we're all four of us were together. It was Mula, myself, Cindy, Wendy, and Cindy's... Dave Wolf? Dave Wolf, yes. And... Uh, Pat Patterson come up and said, we're going to switch the belt tonight. And that must have been when Dom Rocco kept throwing my arm up and down. Hmm. Uh, I had no idea that was going to happen. Uh, nobody told me nothing. But we didn't even talk about, talk about it to me or anything. Uh, Cindy walked up to me later on that, after, uh, that night. And she said, I wonder why uh, they're going to take the belt off 
of my trainee and put it on you. I just wonder why they want to do that. And uh, Mula was putting on the spider lady outfit. So I didn't think nothing about it. I know she was mad. I heard a lot of commotion going on outside, but I know she was really mad. She was upset. I don't blame her. That was only one night he was really wild. He got to drinking a lot, and he smashed the bar up. But the, one of the agents, uh, Arnold Skolan, I think, came in and said, uh, I got your trans money, Moo. I got your trans money for the girls. And she's oh, hun, let's just go in the other room and talk about it. So Velvet and I said, okay. So we pressed our ears up against the wall as hard as we could just to listen to what was going on. And I remember him saying to her, um, okay, here's 150 for each girl. It's for a week. And I told Velvet, I said, okay, we're going to see what we get. We're going to see if all these things we've heard is true. We're going to see what we get when we get home. So when it came, maybe three weeks, you know, when we went to check up with her, she told me that we had gotten um, $50 a piece. And there was four of us. So there's Mula got her 150 and that's um, 300 she got from three girls. And from then on, I, I just disrespected her to no ends. And there was nothing we could do or say. Jimmy come up to us. We were out in the pool, and that's when Ricky Steamboat was out there. And Jimmy said, you know, you both work so good together, but, you know, this is old school, and, you know, you need to maybe change your image. You know, you work so well together. Change your image a little bit, and maybe it might be a little brighter and something different. Maybe I can manage you girls. I guess, you know, because Jimmy's real good like that. He, was, he had ideas. He was always speaking ideas all the time. And, and he said, I have this idea, maybe if it's, with you and Judy uh, having blonde hair, and maybe wear black and gold, and we'd call you the Glamour Girls. I knew we were going to need a manager, but I, just, I didn't want Mula saying, well, okay, I'll be your manager, and just ruin the whole thing. So we had to hold back, and he just stood there and looked at us. He said, come on now, spill it out. I know you got some ideas, and give me the idea. So Mula starts talking. We got the Bomb Angels to come over. It was really one of the best matches we'd ever had, and the girls didn't speak English, but we could always understand one another with just just nods or scratches or touch. We didn't work each other that much over there, but about three days before we were leaving, Mula calls the hotel, and Judy answers the phone, and Mula said, uh, the office told me to tell you that you need to drop the belts, um, on the the last night you're here, you need to drop the belt. I believe it might have been Pat Patterson that called. Somebody called from the office and said, you girls just screwed up. And um, Judy said, why? And he said, because, you know, how can you just go over our heads and switch the belts like that? And you just messed everything up for your WrestleMania. And there's nothing we could do about it now. And we tried to tell them about Mula, And it's just like they didn't hear it, didn't care. They were just mad because we switched the belts in Japan and it just messed up everything for WrestleMania. So the Bomb Angels didn't get to come back. Um, so she cost you a big payday too. She cost me a big payday and she cost it for a lot of girls. Jeez. I didn't get in a business or work on the road just for myself. I was never a glory hound. I didn't care. I, I thought of myself as being somebody that was in the ring because I was experienced with psychology. That was very important to me, psychology. Um, to help, you know, other talent to get over. That's what I was made for, to get other talent over. And I knew how to do that.